Welcome, Bush. Welcome, Bush. We are continuing our book club on Warriors by Erin Hunter today, uh, chapter 12. Hey, I've been thinking about and kind of wondering on what's going to happen next when the, um, the, uh, the cats get to go to um, the big meeting. Um, so I'm kind of doing some wondering. I'm wondering if you are too. So as you're listening, think of uh, some things that you're wondering about or maybe making some minor predictions in your brain. Um, I guess we're talking about the clubs. So here we go, chapter 12. Fire paw peered over the brow of the bush-covered slope. Gray paw and raven paw crouched beside him. Next to them, a group of Thunder Clan elders, queens, and warriors waited in the undergrowth for Blue Star to give a signal. Firepaw had not been to this place since his first journey with Lionheart and Tiger Claw. The steep sided glade looked now. The rich greenness of the woods had been blue by the cold by the wind, and the leaves on the trees glowed silver. At the bottom stood the large oaks that marked where the corner of each clan's territory touched the other, tr the other three. The air was thick with the warm sense of cats from the other clans. Firepaw could see them quite clearly in the moonlight, moving about below the grassy clearing that lay between the four oaks. In the center of the clearing, a large jagged rock rose from the forest floor like a broken tooth. Look at all those cats down there, hissed Ravenpaw under his breath. That's Crooks, Ravenpaw his back. River clans live here. Firepaw mew, nudging Ravenpaw impatiently. That light-colored tabby beside the great rock? Firepaw followed Graypaw's knot and saw a huge tom, even bigger than Lionheart, sitting at the center of the clearing. His striped coat shone pale in the moonlight. Even from this distance, his old face showed the signs of a harsh life, and his mouth looked twisted as if it had once been broken and had healed badly. Hey, new Graypaw. Did you see Sandpaw spit when I told her I'd hope she had a nice evening? You bet, Firepaw, mute her. Firepaw interrupted them with a muffled growl. There's Broken Star, Shadow Clan's leader, he hissed. Firepaw looked down at the tabby brown cat, the dark brown tabby. His fur was unusually long, and his face was broad and flattened. There's a stillness in the way he sat and stared around him that made Firepaw's fur prickle uncomfortably. He looks pretty nasty, Firepaw muttered. Yeah, agreed Graypaw. He certainly had a reputation among all the clans for not suffering fools gladly, and he's not been a leader that long. Four moons. Ever since his father, Ragged Star, died. What does the leader of Wind Clan look like? Firepaw asked. Tall Star? I've never seen him, but I know he's black and white with a very long tail, answered Graypaw. Can you see him now? asked Ravenpaw. Graypaw peered down, searching the crowd of cats below. Nope. Can you send any Wind Clan cats? Firepaw asked. Graypaw shook his head. No. Lionheart's meow sounded softly behind them. The Wind Clan cats may just be late. But why don't you don't turn up at all? You Graypaw. Hush. We must all be patient. These are difficult times. Now keep quiet. Blue Star will give the signal to move soon. Lionheart meowed quietly. As he spoke, Blue Star stood, holding her tail high, flicked it from one side to the other. Firepaw's heart missed a beat as the Thunder Clan cats rose as one and bounded through the bushes down toward the meeting place. He raced alongside them, feeling the wind rush in his ears and his paws tingled with anticipation. Thunder Clan cats paused instinctively on the edge of the clearing, outside the boundary of the oaks. Blue Star sniffed the air. Then she nodded, and the troop moved forward into the clearing. Firepaw felt thrilled. The elk cats looked even more impressive close up, milling about the great walk, rock. A large white warrior strode past. Firepaw and Ravenpaw looked at him in awe. Look at his paws, Ravenpaw murmured. Firepaw looked down and realized the huge paws of this great tom. Blackfoot, mewed Graypaw, Shadow Clan's new deputy. Blackfoot stalked over to Broken Star and sat down beside him. The Shadow Clan leader acknowledged him with a twitch of one of his ears, but said nothing. When does the meeting begin? Ravenpaw asked Whitestorm. 
Be patient, Ravenpaw, he answered. The sky is clear tonight, so we have plenty of time. Lionheart leaned over and added, We warriors like to spend a little time boasting about our victories, while the elders swapped tales about the ancient days before the two of came here. All three apprentices looked up at him and saw his whiskers twitch mischievously. Dappletail, One Eye, and Small Ear headed straight off toward the group of elderly cats who were settling themselves below one of the oak trees. White Storm and Lionheart strolled over to one to another pair of warriors whom Firepaw did not know. He sniffed the air and recognized their scent as River Clan. Blue Star's voice sounded behind the three apprentices. Don't waste any of your time tonight, she warned. This is a good opportunity to see your enemies. Listen to them. Remember what they look like and how they behave. There is a great deal to be learned from these meetings. And say little, warned Tiger Claw. Don't give anything away that might be used against us once the moon has waned. Don't worry, we won't, Firepaw promised hastily, looking into Tiger Claw's eyes. The feeling that Tiger Claw didn't trust his loyalty lingered with him still. The two warriors nodded and moved on, and the apprentices were left alone. They looked at each other. What do we do now? Firepaw asked. But they said, Ravenpaw, listen, and don't say too much, Graypaw added. Firepaw nodded gravely. I'm going to see where Tiger Claw would be muted. Well, I'm going to find Lionheart, mewed Graypaw. You coming, Ravenpaw? No, thanks, Ravenpaw replied. I'm going to find some other apprentices. Okay, we'll meet up with you later, mewed Firepaw, as he trotted in the direction of Tiger, in the direction Tiger Claw had taken. He set to Tiger Claw easily and found him sitting at the center of a group of huge warriors behind the Great Walk. Tiger Claw was speaking. It was a tale fire. Many times again. Tiger Claw was describing his recent battle against the Ra River Clan hunting party. I wrestled like a lion clan cat. The three warriors tried to hold me off, but I threw them off. I fought them until the two lay two lay knocked out, and the other had run off into the forest like a kit crying for its mother. This time, Tiger Claw didn't mention killing Oakheart in vengeance for Redtail's death. Perhaps it's so he doesn't offend the River Clan warriors. Firepod decided. Firepaw listened politely to the end of the story, but a familiar scent was distracting him. As soon as Tiger Claw had finished speaking, Firepaw turned and crept away toward the sweet smell which was coming from the group of cats nearby. He found Graypaw sitting among these cats, but that was not the scent that he had been following. Sitting opposite of Gray Graypaw between the two River Clan toms was Spotted Leaf. Firepaw glanced at her shyly and settled himself beside his friend. Still no scent of wind clan, he mewed to Graypaw. The meeting hasn't begun yet. They may still come, replied his friend. Look, there's Running Noose, Running Nose. He's the new Shadow Clan medicine cat, apparently. He nodded toward a small gray cat at the center of the group. I can see why they call him Running Nose, Firepaw remarked. The medicine's cat nose was wet at the tip and encrusted around the edges. Yup, replied Graypaw with a scornful growl. I can't see why they appointed him when he can't even cure his own cold. Running Nose was telling the cats about an herb that the medicine cat had used in the old days to cure kitten cough. Since the two legs came and filled the place with hard earth and strange flowers, he complained in a high-pitched yowl. The herb has disappeared and the kittens died needlessly in cold weather. The cats gathered around him yelled their disapproval. It would never have been in the time of the clan and the great clan cats, growled a black river clan queen indeed meowed a silver tabby the great cats would have killed any two legs that dared enter their territory if tiger clan roamed this forest still two legs would not have built this far into our land then firepaw hood heard spotted leaf's quiet mew if tiger clan still roamed these forests we would hardly have made our territory here either what's tiger clan mewed a small voice beside them Firepaw noticed a little tabby apprentice from one of the other clans sitting beside him. Tiger Clan is one of the greatest cat clans that used to roam the forest, Graypaw explained quietly. Tiger Clan is a set of cats. Tiger Clan is cats of the night. It's horses with jet black stripes. Then there's Lion Clan. They're 
Grandpa hesitated, frowning as he tried to remember. Oh, I've heard of them, knew the tabby. They were as big as tiger clan cats with yellow fur and gold manes like the rays of sun. Grandpa nodded. And then there is this other one, Spotty Clan or something like that. I suspect you're thinking of Leopard Clan, young Graypa, mewed a voice from behind them. Lionheart, Graypa greeted his mentor with an affectionate touch on the nose. Lionheart shook his head at the monster. Don't you youngsters know your history? Leopard Clan are the swiftest cats, huge and golden, spotted with black paw prints. You can thank Leopard Clan for the speed and hunting skills you now possess. Thank them? Why? asked the tabby. Lionheart gazed down at the little apprentice and answered, There's a trace of all the great cats on every cat today. We would not be night hunters without our tiger clan ancestors. And our love of the sun's worth comes from the lion clan, he paused. You are a shadow clan apprentice, aren't you? How many moons are you? The tabby stared awkwardly down the ground. Six moons, he stammered, not meeting Lionheart's eyes. Rather small for six moons, Lionheart murmured. His tone was gentle, but his gaze was searching and serious. My mother was small too, answered the tabby nervously. He bowed his head and backed away, disappearing into the crowd of cats with a twitch of his light brown tail. Lionheart turned to Firepaw and Graypaw. We might be small, but at least he was curious. If only you two showed us as much interest in the story that the elders tell. Sorry, Lionheart, Firepaw, and Graypaw mewed, exchanging doubtful glances. Lionheart grunted initially. I'll go away, the pair of you. Next time I hope Lucifer decides to bring apprentices who show, who appreciate what they hear. And with a half-hearted growl, he chased them away from the group. Come on, purred Ravenpaw's way. Let's see what Ravenpaw's gotten to. Ravenpaw was in the middle of a group of apprentices who were clamoring for him to tell about the battle with Raven, with Rear Clan. Oh, go on, Ravenpaw. Tell us what happened, called a pretty black and white she-cat. Ravenpaw shyly shuffled his paws and shook his head. Come on, Ravenpaw, says another. Ravenpaw looked around and saw Firepaw and Graypaw at the edge of the crowd. Firepaw nodded encouragingly. Ravenpaw flicked his tail in acknowledgement and began his story. He stumbled a bit at first, but as he continued, the tremor disappeared from his voice and his audience leaned in, their eyes growing wider. Fur was flying everywhere. Blood spattered the leaves of the bramble bushes, bright red against green. I just fought off a huge warrior and sent him squealing into the bushes when the ground shook, and I heard a warrior scream. It was Oakheart. Red tail raced past me, his mouth dripping blood and his fur torn. Oakheart is dead, he howled. Then he rushed off to help Tiger Claw as he fought another warrior. Who would have thought that Ravenpaw was such a good storyteller? Graypaw murmured to Firepaw, sounding impressed. But Firepaw was thinking of something else. What was it Ravenpaw had said? That Redtail had killed Oakheart? But according to Tigerclaw, Oakheart had killed Redtail, and he, Tigerclaw, had killed Oakheart in revenge. If Redtail killed Oakheart, who killed Redtail? Firepaw hissed to Graypaw. If who did what? Graypaw echoed absentmindedly. He was only half listening to Firepaw. Firepaw shook his head to clear it. Ravenpaw must have been mistaken, he thought. He must have meant Tigerclaw. Are you guys confused with all the claws too? Ravenpaw was coming to the end of the story. Finally, Redtail was dragging the wailing cat off a tiger claw by his tail and with the strength of the whole tiger clan flung him into the bushes. A moving shadow caught Firepaw's eyes. He glanced around and saw tiger claw standing a short distance away. The warrior was watching Ravenpaw, Ravenpaw with an iron stare. Unaware of his mental presence, Ravenpaw continued to answer the question after questions with his enthusiastic audience. What were Oakheart's dying words? Is it true that Oakheart had never lost a battle before? Ravenpaw replied promptly with his voice high and clear and his eyes shining. But when Firepaw glanced back at Tigerclaw, he saw a look of horror and then fury creep over the warrior's face. Clearly, Tigerclaw wasn't enjoying Ravenpaw's story at all. Firepaw was just about to say something to Graypaw when a loud yell signaled to all cats for quiet. Firepaw couldn't help feeling relieved as Ravenpaw fell silent at last and Tigerclaw turned away. 
Firepaw looked up to see where the yell had come from. Three cats silhouetted against the moonlight sky on top of the great rock. There were Blue Star, Broken Star, and Crooked Star. The clan leaders were about to be in the meeting. But where was the Wind Clan leader? Surely they won't start without Tall Star, Firepaw hissed under his breath. I don't know, Graypaw murmured back. Haven't you noticed? There isn't a single Wind Clan cat here, whispered a River Clan apprentice on the other side of Firepaw. Firepaw guessed that similar conversations were going on all around him. The other cats were gathering beneath the great rock, and unsettled murmuring rubbled in their throats. We can't start yet, yelled one of the voices above the noise. Where are the Wind Clan representatives? We must wait until all the clans are, are present. On top of the blue, on top of the rock, Blue Star stepped forward. Her gray fur glowed almost white in the moonlight. Cats of all clans. Welcome, she meowed in a clear voice. It is true that Wind Clan is not present, but Broken Star wishes to speak anyway. Broken Star padded noisily up to stand beside Blue Star. He surveyed the crowd for a few moments, his orange eyes burning. Then he took a deep breath and began. Friends, I come to speak to you tonight about the needs of Shadow Clan. But he was interrupted by raised, impatient voices from below. Where is Tallstar? cried one. Where are the Wind Clan warriors? yelled another. Broken Star stretched up to his full height and lashed his tail from side to side. As the leader of the Shadow Clan, it is my right to address you here. He growled in a voice full of menace. The, the crowd fell into an uneasy silence. All around him, Firepaw could smell the, ac the acrid tang of fear. Broken Star yelled again. We all know that the hard time of Leaf Bear and, new and late new leaf have left us with little prey in our hunting grounds. But we also know that Wind Clan, River Clan, and Thunder Clan lost many of its kits in the freezing weather that came so late in the season. Shadow Clan did not lose kits. We are hardened to the cold north wind. Our kits are stronger than yours for the moment they are born, and so we find ourselves with many mouths to feed and too little prey to feed them. The crowd, still silent, listened anxiously. The needs of Shadow Clan are simple. In order to survive, we must increase our hunting territory. That is why I insist you allow Shadow Clan warriors to hunt in your territories. A shocked but muted growl rippled through the crowd. Share our hunting grounds, called an outraged voice of Tiger Claw. It is unprecedented cried a tortoise queen, tor tortoise shell queen from River Clan. The clans have never shared hunting rights. Should Shadow Clan be punished because our kids thrive? Yelled Broken Star from the Great Rock. Do you want us to starve, our young to starve? You must share what you have with us. Must? That small ear furiously back from the back of the crowd. Must, repeated Broken Star. Wind Clan failed to understand this. In the end, we were forced to drive them out of their territory. Snarls of outrage burst from the crowd, but Broken Star's cattle wall rang loud above them. And if we have to, we will drive you all from the, your hunting grounds in order to feed our hungry kids. There was an instant silence. On the other side of the clearing, Firepaw heard River Clan apprentice start to mutter something, but he was quickly hushed by an elder. Satisfied that he had every cat's attention, Broken Star continued, Each year, two legs spoil more of our territory. At least one clan must remain strong if all the clans are to survive. Shadow Clan thrives while you all struggle, and there may come a time when you need us to protect you. You doubt our strength? His Tiger Claw. His pale eyes glared threateningly at the Shadow Clan leader, and his powerful shoulders rippled with tension. I do not ask for your answer now, Broken Star ignored the warrior's challenge. You must each go away and consider my words, but bear this in mind. Would you prefer to share your prey or be driven out and left homeless and starving? Warriors, elders, and apprentices looked at one another in disbelief. In the anxious pause that followed, Crooked Star stepped forward. I have already agreed to allow Shadow Clan some hunting rights in the river that runs through our territory. He meowed quietly, gazing down at his clan. Horror and humiliation rippled through the River Clan cats as their leader's words. We were not consulted, cried the lead Silver Tabby. I feel that this is best for our clan, for all the clans, Crooked Star explained, his voice heavy with resignation. There are plenty of fish in the river. 
It is better to share our prey than to spill blood fighting over it. And what of the ThunderClan, Smaller croaked. Blue Star, have you two agreed to this outrageous demand? Blue Star unwaveringly met the old cat's gaze. I have made no agreement with Broken Star, except that I shall discuss his proposal with my clan after the gathering. Well, at least that's something, muttered Graypaw and Firepaw Zero. We'll show them we're not as soft as that yellow-bellied river clan. Broken Star spoke up again, his rasping voice sounding arrogant and strong after Crooked Star surrender. I also bring news that is important to the safety of your kids. A Shadow Clan cat has turned rogue and spurred the warrior code. We chased her out of our camp, but we do not know where she is. She looks like a mangy old creature, but she has the bite like a tiger clan. Firepaw's fur bristled. Could Broken Star possibly be talking about Yellow Fang? He pricked up his ears, curious to hear more. She is dangerous. I warn you, do not offer shelter her. And, Broken Star paused dramatically, until she is caught and killed, I urge you to keep a close eye on your kits. Firepaw knew from the nervous growl that rumbled in the throat to the ThunderClan cats that they, too, had thought of Yellow Fang. The bold she cat had done nothing to endear herself to the reluctant host, and Firepaw guessed it wouldn't take much to drum up hatred against her. Even the words of the despised enemy of would be enough. The Shadow Clan warriors began to push their way out of the throng of cats. Broken Star leaned down from the rock, and his warriors immediately surrounded him and escorted him away from the fortress back into the Shadow Clan territory. The remaining Shadow Clan cats followed quickly behind, including the undersized tabby Lionheart had questioned earlier. But among the other Shadow Clan apprentices, the tabby no longer looked unusually small. They all looked tiny and undernourished, more like kits of three or four moons than full-fledged apprentices. What do you think of all that? Great palm mewed in a low voice. Ravenpaw bounded over before Firepaw could reply. What's going to happen now, he wailed. His fur fluffed up in alarm and his eyes wider than the other. Firepaw didn't answer. The elders of ThunderClan were gathering nearby, and he was straining to hear what they were saying. That must be the yellow thing he was talking about, growled Small Ear. Well, she did snap at Golden Flower's youngest kit the other day, murmured Speckletail darkly. She was the oldest nursery queen and fiercely protective of all the kids. And we left her behind with the camp virtually unguarded, wailed one eye, who for once seemed who for once seemed to be having trouble hearing every had no trouble hearing everything. I tried to tell you she was a danger to us, his dark stripe. Blue Star has to listen to reason now and get rid of her before she harms any of our young. Tiger Claw strode up to the group. We must return to the camp at once and deal with this rogue, he yelled. Firepod did not stop to hear any more. His mind was spinning. Loyal as he was to his clan, he just couldn't believe that Yellow Fang would be a danger to kids. Frightened for the old she-cat, burning with questions only she could answer, he raced away from Graypaw and Ravenpaw without a word. He charged up the hillside, pelted through the forest. Had he been mistaken about Yellow Fang? If he warned her about the danger she was in, would he be risking his own position in the ThunderClan? Whatever trouble he got himself into... He'd have to find out the truth from her before the other cats got back to camp. Phew. Did you guys keep track of everyone in there? I was struggling a little bit too, but I think I'm getting it kind of figured out. Um, I hope that you are too. And I believe that's the end of our chapter today. It is. So until next time, Rockets. <laughs>